The rudder damage that I'm going to repair in this video came from my first attempt at a tail slide and entail touch with a giant scale airplane. I was cheating as hard as I can using a demon gyro, but I got it backing up a little faster than I thought and the ground was a little harder than I thought. I completed it, but ding the rudder. The good news is that the damage is pretty minor and it's confined to the bottom and rear edge of the rudder. First I want to clean all the covering in the area up real well using alcohol that I've tested with this covering. We want to get rid of all the gas and oil residue so this covering goes back together better. With a fresh blade and my hobby knife I'm going to carefully cut around the outside of the area to be repaired. The damage is low enough that I can stay away from cutting into that graphic. I'll just cut a big flap open to expose the damage and then tape that flap back out of the way. I clamped a pair of steel angles to the rudder to make sure that the bottom edge is absolutely flat. All of the structure along the bottom of the rudder is there, it's just cracked and broken, so I was able to reassemble it and then glue it down well with CA. Once all those pieces are glued up, I can remove the angles and the rudder will stay straight. I use the tip of the hobby knife to lift and pry the pieces into the best position that I can get. I take my time to make sure I get as even a surface as I can, but I know it won't be perfect and we're going to have a cure for that a little later. Once all the pieces are tacked in place, I go over all the seams and cracks with CA to make sure everything is glued down very well. I used a straight sanding bar to make sure that all the glue is taken down to the high points and now we're going to fill in the low spots. And yes, that is spackle. This is common drywall spackle and most of the weight in it is the water. And once we let that evaporate out, there's very little weight left. By the time we're done and have this all sanded down so it's just filling the low spots, there's virtually no weight added to the airplane. Between each thin coat of spackle, I used a straight bar to take it back down to the high spots so we can see what kind of low spots we have left to fill. I actually applied three light coats before this sanded down to resolve nice and smooth. When all the sanding is done, I go over the area with alcohol again, just spray it on and wipe it right off with a paper towel to make sure we get all of the dust off of the wood. Just to be sure I'll let this dry 10 or 15 minutes before I start doing covering to make sure we don't trap any moisture in. With the covering iron set on about half power, I carefully iron down the edges at a flap that I cut up earlier. Even though the rudder is fully sheeted, I leave the center disc flap loose. I don't want to stick that down. Next I cut strips of the covering and seal that down over the edges of the flap that we cut up earlier. You want to take your time and seal these strips down as cleanly as you can. Then once those strips are sealed down over all of our seams, to take the heat gun and shrink down the covering in the middle and smooth everything right out. And when I'm done, you have to look kind of close to tell that this has been repaired. I could have replaced or recovered the whole rudder, but this is a lot quicker, cheaper, and I'm ready to go flying again.